It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere playing at luckylandslots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere playing at luckylandslots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Forget everything you think you know about rowing at an elite level. Whether you watch the university boat race once a year, have enjoyed the heroics of Redgrave and Pinsent at the Olympic Games, or marvelled at British rowing's success at the Paralympic Games, it's time to put those preconceptions to one side ahead of two huge rowing events coming to Wales later this year. This is Great British Bosses from Anything But Footy as we look ahead to the World Rowing Coastal Championships and Beach Sprint Finals being held in South Wales in October. In a moment, Michael speaks to Team GB silver medalist Jack Beaumont about his experience competing in the event when it was last held in Portugal. But first, we speak to someone who not only rows at the highest level, but is also part of the board at Welsh Rowing, who together with British Rowing, is bringing this event to Pembrokeshire. I'm John. Hello, my name is Benjamin Pritchard. I am the PR1 male sculler for British Rowing. I'm a very avid Welshman and I've taken up a seat on the board of Welsh Rowing for the first time this year. And I'm really looking forward to having the Coastal Championships and Beach Sprint Championships in October in Saundersfoot, West Wales, my part of the world. Come and join me. So tell me, how exciting are these two weekends in October going to be on the Pembrokeshire coast for the World Rowing Coastal Championships and the Beach Sprint Finals the weekend after? I think it's fantastic. I think it's going to be the first major event that's held in the UK for rowing since the London Games, right? And I know it's off the coast and it's a bit different, but it's the biggest rowing competition we've had here. So that's pretty cool. Um, And yeah, like I said, it's going to be exciting for Wales. Saundersfoot always gets behind any event that's there. You know, the long course weekend, when that goes down to Tenby, everyone is out as well. So I think the West Wales love a a sporting event and hopefully they'll get behind us in the the beach sprint and uh, coastal championships. What can you tell us about the area that this event is going to be held in for people that maybe don't know? Ah, it's idyllic you know I, I i said at the start of the podcast that i'm a massive avid welshman right and home and the green grass green grass of home right and i think wales has some of the best beaches in the world let alone definitely the best beaches in the uk and saundersfoot is definitely up there with those and i actually spent seven years on the beaches as an rnli lifeguard before before my accident so the beaches are very close to my home so it's going to be exciting to get down there and get involved and watch the event unfold i just i think Welsh people love sport, and I think that's you know part of our culture. There's a massive sporting culture. Rugby is obviously the the national sport, but like I said, when the long course comes to weekend, or when the Ironman Wales comes in, or you know whatever it may be, the streets are full. You know the streets are full. Everyone gets out. Everyone gets in. And I think that's a, a real drive back to the Welsh community. You know we still are small pockets of mining villages. You know, however you look at it, mining and fishing villages, that's all the Wales is made up of. You know, and I'm from Mumbles, which is a very small fishing village, but it's such a close-knit community. So I think when something this big comes there, the community really gets out and really wants to get behind it. And I'm, I'm hoping that the Welsh people do be proud and get out there and support all the nations that come and have a go. What will conditions be like then for rowing? What can you tell us about being out there in the water? 
very different to what I like. That's uh, as a fine as a fine sculler or as a, a lane sculler. So that's on the the rivers and lakes. You know, that's I like it to be glassy flat. We, we use a phrase called glassy, and I think the the bigger the better in terms of coastal, isn't it? I think they like it to be to be lumpy. And I actually have a friend who um, started rowing the same time as me in hospital, and he rows at a Dover rowing club. And I remember going down once and watching him go out and he was like, oh, this is a relatively flat day. And the waves were definitely overhead, you know, and I was looking at him going, hmm, I'm not sure I want to row in that. <laughs> but yeah, I think they like it uh, big and chunky. And the time of year in October, at least the water will be warm. September and October is the warmest time of water in the UK because it's had all summer to heat up. So it's the nicest time to go surfing, nicest time to get in the water in the UK, especially in Wales. Uh, but it's also some of the punchy times when it comes to to waves. So I think we can look forward to some exciting, lumpy, chunky races, which will be really cool. And what can you tell us about the format of the weekend for people that have maybe seen you in an Olympic, a Paralympic environment where you're going from a start to a finish? This is a bit different. Yeah, so I, I actually haven't delved into coastal rowing in all that much detail, but I know that when Jack Beaumont and Foxy, they had a a rude awakening when they went out and did some in Portugal this year. And they said that, you know, we train to race over 2000 meters on very flat water, uh, but coastal, I think is something like 6K or, or plus, you know, and they have to go out around a bar and there's turn in. And I think it's going to be, it's a lot more complicated than, than my, my race where I just get to sit in a lane and stay in the middle and hope I'm going straight. These guys have actually got to navigate the shoreline and the tides and get around that bar as quick as they can. Now, I was at a football match recently where I was actually sat on what I think the old school you would call the terraces. And someone turned to me and said, this is the way to watch football, isn't it? And I thought, no, the way to watch football is in hospitality. It's in the box where you've access to nice toilets and things. So hospitality packages available now. There's general admission tickets as well. And if you go for the full three days, just £16 a day. That seems to me to be a bargain for some top class elite sporting action across the weekend. In West Wales, the beer is cheap. So the beer is a, is a lot more cheap than here in Berkshire. So I can definitely definitely say that if you're looking for a good weekend on the beach, watching some good sport, then get out there and enjoy yourself. That's for sure. And everyone needs access to a decent toilet, don't they? That's one of the yeah. key, key considerations when you get to a certain age and go to a sporting event. So, Stornis is very full of some nice cafes and some nice restaurants and some nice hotels. And I'm pretty sure there's something to cater for everyone who wants to come and watch some good rowing. Well, we really look forward to the event. Quick chat about you. Obviously, Tokyo 2020 and 2021. Paris in your sights? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's no, it's no, uh, no secret that I didn't come, come away from Tokyo best pleased. You know, I had a fifth, fifth at the Games and I had a Paralympic record on the, on the repercharge day and I just didn't, didn't perform on the final, you know, and that's kind of... I don't want that to be my legacy. I had a fantastic time at the games. You know, there were some great memories there, but I definitely didn't have the results I set out to achieve. So Paris was always the goal for me. When I left hospital, I wrote down in my little black book, a uh, gold medal at Paris 2024. So Tokyo kind of came three years early for me. So my eyes are definitely set on that top step in Paris and training this winter has gone well. You know, it's been, it's been really good. We've decided to switch up some of my training methods and, there's been a big restructure of British rowing, which has been well documented and um, some new fresh opinions have come in. And we are actually designing a new new chair. That's one of the projects that are going on for the PR1 seat at the moment. So I'm really excited and looking to see where it's going. It's unfortunate that this last week I've had COVID, but um, it's hit me again. That's the second time I've had it now. But hopefully that's all the hurdles out of the way and we can crack on now to the World Championships in, in Czech Republic. How are you feeling then post-COVID second time around? I think uh, it was a lot shorter and sharper this time. The first time I had COVID, it stuck around a lot longer. This time it was very short and sharp. And I actually today did my first training session back. So we did a 60 minute um, bike under 120 heart rate. And I think today touch wood, it's gone. It's gone okay. You know, I'm not feeling too jet lagged or too fatigued after it. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be back quicker than I was last time. Um, but it's quite a long season, this one, being the year after the Paralympics as they world rowing are nice to us and they like to give us some time off and uh, so the world championships are, are quite late in September so it'll be interesting to see how the season progresses you know it's all about trying to balance yourself now and not peak too early and it will be great I guess for you guys as well to have a build-up to a games a Paralympic games in Paris that 
is not dominated by talk of coronavirus. Yeah, although I don't think it's going away anytime soon, is it? I know that all you know, the re- regulations and uh, you know restrictions are, are lifted, but I, I generally think, still think it's a concern. You know, I was very unwell in bed the other day, um, so I think whilst I'm glad that it's, it's dying down and out of the public eye so much, I do think it's going to be there for a long time to come. It's a, for me, it's a shame. You know, my category PR one, the Ukrainian scholar is is by far the the, the standout performance. You know, it's you want to beat him. And I think everything that's going on in his country right now means his training has been affected. And hopefully that doesn't affect him come the Worlds because it definitely won't be a World Championships if he's not had the same opportunities that I've had this year. Um, That's, you know, I want to beat him. You know, I don't want to to get that top step because he can't be there. I want to beat him respectfully, you know, and he'd want the same, you know, he'd want me to beat him. He doesn't want to give it to me. Um, but the good thing is, I'm in, in daily contact with Roman and his family, and they, they are safe and they are doing well. So that's good to hear. And it's been it's been scary for all of us, but um, the PR one community is quite tight. Although we are fierce competitors, because it's just us in our own boats, we have a great friendship. So we've all reached out. We've all said we can help when we can, and just you know, hopefully it sorts itself out very soon. Yeah, as you say, I mean, winning on the field of play is what you want to do. You don't want to win, do you? In a diplomacy war or in a cabinet war office somewhere no you don't want an asterisk next to your name you know you want to you want to be the world champion because you beat the best in the world um and right now Polyansky is the best in the world he's two-time Paralympic champion multiple times world champion world record holder you know and whilst I've got the Paralympic record he still holds the world record for two seconds quicker than me so I need to need to beat him and that's the aim well fingers crossed that you guys all get to those world championships safe and well, especially with what's going on at the moment. And fingers crossed as many people finally will get themselves down to Wales to come and see the World Rowing Coastal Championships and the Beach Sprint Finals. What would be your final message to people listening, thinking, mm, might fancy that in October? I, I would say just just come along. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a relatively new format of rowing in, in the UK, for sure. And for all those countries that are surrounded by sea that might not have those 2K lakes or might not be from schools which have rowing on their curriculum. Coastal rowing is your, is your entry into the sport. You know, it's fun, it's fast. And I kind of compare it to cyclocross in cycling because it's that kind of, uh, when, you go to, when you go to a track event or you go to a time trial event when you're a cyclist or road race, it was all very sterile. It was all very prim and proper. It was all done to, to timings, to details. And then he went to cyclocross and there was a DJ playing music. There was beers after the races. There was burger stands, you know, or like Ghent Wengelham when you've got, you know, the Ghent Six Day where there's a big party, you know, that kind of stuff. I think coastal rowing is that version of, of rowing to what my rowing is, you know. And I think for those people that want to go and enjoy rowing or, or think, oh, I can give this a go, this is definitely the place to start. This is definitely the place to go and have some fun and get involved in a fast, frantic type of rowing and see where it may take you. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time. No, no problem at all. Thank you for having me. Paralympics GB and British Rowing's Benjamin Pritchard. And we echo his well wishes to Ukrainian Paralympic champion and world record holder Roman Polyansky. You're listening to Great British Bosses from Anything But Footy as we look ahead to the World Rowing Coastal Championships and Beach Sprint Finals, which are being hosted here in the UK this autumn. Here's Michael again, in conversation with one man who knows what it's like to take part and he recently retired from competitive rowing. Hi, I'm Jack Beaumont. I'm a former international rower from the Great Britain rowing team. I was fortunate to go to two Olympic Games in Rio and Tokyo and won a silver medal at the Tokyo one, which I'm still so proud of. In fact, I'm getting goosebumps now thinking about it. Let's talk then about the Olympics, first of all. And obviously, you've stepped off the, the main programme. What were the reasons behind that? Yeah, so that it was a massive decision to decide to not continue training and, and competing internationally. But to be honest, from my career and my goals that I want looks to achieve, I felt like I completed it. Although I didn't win at the Olympics, I won a silver medal. And for someone, you know, rowing is a sport where you, you have these enormous people. And I'm not enormous. I'm big in normal society, but in rowing, I'm small. So to be honest, when we crossed the line and realised we had a silver medal, I felt unbelievably just elated with it. And I know how hard the training is. It's, it's sort of 15, 16 sessions a week, really gruelling, without much reward most of the time. To then go and do races that are decided by 
you know, hundredth of a second, it's a big commitment for nothing really guaranteed. So I kind of thought, I've had a great run doing this. I'm going to stop still loving the sport. There's no easy medals to win at an Olympics or a Paralympics, but to be an international rower is really hard work, isn't it? It takes a lot out of you to get to that Games and to have gone to two and go through two cycles. Well, I think you're right. That's the, the thing with rowing. I'm, I'm sure every sport has their, their things about it, but you know, rowing is incredibly demanding physically and it requires, there's just no shortcut to get to the speed you need to be. If I tried to do 90% of the training, I would not even get 90% of the result. It's, you know, that time you have to be spending building up your aerobic capacity to be able to be competitive against these amazing athletes around the world is difficult. And with, with that comes spending a lot of time out on windy, cold lakes. So it's, it's quite grueling. You'll be there sort of before sunrise and after sunset in the winter months getting icicles kind of forming in your hair because it's so cold and you're out on the lake and sometimes questioning why am I doing this but of course we all knew why we were doing it. Was it a bit hurtful some of the criticism that British rowing got after the Olympics because I think what a lot of people didn't realise was it was a squad in transition there were a lot of retirements after Rio there wasn't that group that came forward in the four then five years. Yeah I would say it was hurtful not not none of it was directed at me because my boat did better than most people thought we could but I think okay it's really difficult when there's huge amounts of funding that go into a sport and they don't bring the results to show for it and it's especially difficult when we come home with two medals but five of our boats come fourth and you know some of those on a different day might have been third might have even been first but they weren't and that's tough and as a team going into the competition, on paper, it probably was one of our strongest ever teams. So to see people calling our teammates snowflakes and whatnot, okay, it's easy to say that when you look at the results, but that's not what they are. I've seen them, I saw them all doing their training and they trained so hard and their scores on the rowing machine and on the water were amazing. But the world is moving on. And I think the important thing to get from it is what has taken what the the sort of processes and program that our team did for sort of 30 years up until the Rio Tokyo Olympics they worked up until now what are we going to do better or what is the team going to do better now to make sure that we're ahead again you obviously as we said right at the start have stepped off so what is life for you now post Olympics what does that look like yeah so it took some time to to figure out firstly whether or not I'd continue and then what to do I knew I wanted to work with people and I knew I wanted to work in something where I could see myself helping people. So I actually now work for an employee wellbeing company, which is helping organizations, large organizations to reduce burnout, um, really improve the return on investment on their sort of wellbeing spend and ultimately have a happier and more productive workforce. I love that. It's really great to see. To, it, um, it's interesting to speak to so many different people and, and kind of see what they do and find out if we can help. But I'm also now trying to work out what's a normal balance of exercise because I'm, I've come from doing the most ridiculous amount of training to learning how to fit it and fit it in around work. Some weeks I'll do far too much and I'll be exhausted. Some weeks I'll do nothing. I'm still eating as I'm training three times a day. So there's a lot of learning about how to be a civilian, I suppose. What's the best bit about not being an athlete aiming for an Olympic Games anymore? It's the time I have my hands now. Whilst I was training, it was all-encompassing. It was everything. And it was, um, I guess, we'd maybe get, we'd get three weeks a year off after World Championships or Olympic Games, maybe a couple of days at Christmas time. And if we were lucky, maybe we'd get a weekend off. And now I get a weekend off every five days. Like we used to think, right, weekend off, you've got to go and book a hotel, find get some flights, do something amazing because you never get this. And now every five days I get a whole weekend. And it just like to be honest, I can't believe I get twenty five days to take off this holiday as well because I get I get a weekend every weekend, which just feels great. So I think it's, you know, being able to spend more time doing other things in my life. I'm sure, though, you've got a couple of weekends in the diary in October for the World Rowing Coastal Championships and Beach Sprint Finals. Tickets on sale now for that. 
people that don't know, what is a World Rowing Coastal Championships? It's different from what people might have seen at a World Series or Olympics where you're point to point. Yes, it is. So it's, it's totally different. So there's, there's two elements of the Coastal Championships and they are really exciting. It's a, a completely different sport to, to the rowing that we're traditionally used to and a different bunch of people that do it. So there's, there's, there's a sprint race, which is, they both start on the beach, they're nuts. So the sprint race, you, you run about 100 metres to the sea, jump into a boat, row 250 metres in a slalom around some boys and sprint back, kind of beach your boat on the beach, jump out and sprint to the finish line. And that's just madness. And then there's um, the, the coastal race, the offshore race, where you have about 20 boats start at the same time. They all start out of the boat. There's a big klaxon. Everyone jumps in, sprints out to these boys, does a four, four to six kilometer loop around the, in the ocean. Again, finishes on the beach and sprint to the finish line. Now, what I think was amazing, because I competed in last year's event in Portugal, is it is really aggressive, actually. It's like being in bumper cars. It's like I, I was involved in so many crashes. It's like, I guess, if you cross uh, America's Cup sailing with um, being on doldrums at the fun fair, that's what you get with coastal, coastal rowing. And a real good spectacle, as you said, you've competed. So people who are purchasing tickets, listening to this and coming down to Pembrokeshire to watch terrific entertainment absolutely and and what a beautiful place to be it's near Tembe. it's a beautiful place and i've really seen a place to go and have the rowing but yeah it's the the in the beach sprint racing the races are super close and anything can happen because of the dynamic element of the water the waves kind of pushing people off here and there and the fact that the getting in and out of the boat is, is such a big part of the race and the sprint it's going to be it, I think it's going to be Rowan's equivalent of watching the climbing that was in the Olympics last year. And that was crazy. Watching those people sort of, it, it, I don't, it, they look like spiders going up those, um, those walls so quickly. I think this will be Rowan's equivalent of that. A really like high octane, exciting race. How did you train for it? Because I've been to the Redgrave Pinson Lake. It's a slightly different environment. Yeah. Um, I tell you the truth, I didn't really train too much for it. We kind of got, we got to Portugal four days before we started racing and made the most of it. So we kind of turned up there as quite, well, complete amateurs in coastal rowing. One of us had done it before, three of us hadn't in our boat. And we kind of, it was a very steep learning curve. The first day I broke a blade, I broke one of my oars, which, um, because I just wasn't used to the conditions. We took, it took a lot of practices to get used to getting in and out of the boat with the waves kind of breaking beside you i think i think it would benefit anyone that wants to race it would be worth going to the sea and getting some practice and ideally getting some advice from someone from a coastal club because knowing the water is a massive part of it so anyone that's interested in this event you'd recommend you know go and look it up get involved come and see it it is a very different sort of rowing event. It's not like if you imagine Henry Regatta as like quite a posh and um, you know smart event with people in suits and ties and dresses and hats and stuff. It wasn't. It's not like that. The coastal rowing. It's more like you're at a beach. People are in swimsuits, having a barbecue, and there's some rowing going on. It's a great day out. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to it, and all the best to you in retirement from competitive rowing. And thanks very much for your time. Oh, thanks for having me. Olympic silver medalist Jack Beaumont. The World Rowing Coastal Championships and Beach Sprint Finals being held on the 7th to the 9th of October and the 14th to the 16th of October in Saundersfoot on the stunning Welsh coast. General admission tickets and hospitality packages are now available. You've been listening to Great British Bosses from Anything But Footy. Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BTW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.